Hittite natively, Nesili, in the language of Nessa, also known as Nesite and Nashite, is an Indo-European language that was spoken by the Hittites, a people of Bronze Age Anatolia who created an empire, centered on Hattusa, as well as parts of the northern Levant and upper Mesopotamia. The language, long extinct now, is attested in cuneiform, in records dating from the 16th Anita text to the 13th century BC, with isolated Hittite loanwords and numerous personal names appearing in an old Assyrian context from as early as the 20th century BC. By the Late Bronze Age, Hittite had started losing ground to its close relative Luyan. It appears that in the 13th century BC, Luyan was the most widely spoken language in the Hittite capital, Hattusa. After the collapse of the Hittite Empire during the more general Late Bronze Age collapse, Luyan emerged in the early Iron Age as the main language of the so-called Syro-Hittite states, in southwestern Anatolia and northern Syria. Hittite is the earliest attested of the Indo-European languages and is the best known of the Anatolian languages. Name Hittite is the modern name for the language because of the identification of the Hatti Hatti kingdom with the biblical Hittites Hebrew, asterisk htum hetum, but that identification was later challenged. The terms Hattian and Hattic, by contrast, refer respectively to the indigenous people who preceded them and to their non-Indo-European Hattic language. In multilingual texts found in Hittite locations, passages written in Hittite are preceded by the adverb Nesili or Nasili, Nisili, in the speech of Nessa Canes, an important city before the rise of the Hittite Empire. In one case, the label is Kanisimnili, in the speech of the people of Canes. Although the Hittite Empire had people from many diverse ethnic and linguistic backgrounds, the Hittite language was used in most secular written texts. In spite of various arguments over the appropriateness of the term, Hittite remains the most current term because of convention and the strength of association with the biblical Hittites. The alternative term Nesite, derived from Nesili, never caught on. Decipherment. The first substantive claim as to the affiliation of Hittite was made by Jorgen Alexander Knutson in 1902 in a book devoted to two letters found at El Amarna, Egypt, between the king of Egypt and a Hittite ruler. Knutson argued that Hittite was Indo-European, largely because of its morphology. Although he had no bilingual texts, he was able to give a partial interpretation to the two letters because of the formulaic nature of the diplomatic correspondence of the period. His argument was not generally accepted, partly because the morphological similarities he observed between Hittite and Indo-European can be found outside of Indo-European and also because the interpretation of the letters was justifiably regarded as uncertain. Knutson was definitively shown to have been correct when many tablets written in the familiar Akkadian cuneiform script but in an unknown language were discovered by Hugo Winkler in what is now the village of Bogaskoy, which was the former site of Hattusa, the capital of the Hittite Empire. Based on a study of this extensive material, Bedrick Rosny succeeded in analyzing the language. He presented his argument that the language is Indo-European in a paper published in 1915, Rosny 1915, which was soon followed by a grammar of the language, Rosny 1917. Rosny's argument for the Indo-European affiliation of Hittite was thoroughly modern although poorly substantiated. He focused on the striking similarities in idiosyncratic aspects of the morphology that are unlikely to occur independently by chance or to be borrowed. They included the R, N alternation in some noun stems the heteroclitics and vocalic oblaut, which are both seen in the alternation in the word for water between the nominative singular, wadar, and the genitive singular, wedanus. He also presented a set of regular sound correspondences. After a brief initial delay because of disruption during the First World War, Rosny's decipherment, tentative grammatical analysis and demonstration of the Indo-European affiliation of Hittite were rapidly accepted and more broadly substantiated by contemporary scholars such as Edgar H. Sturtevant, who authored the first scientifically acceptable Hittite grammar with a Christomathy and a glossary. The most up-to-date grammar of the Hittite language is currently Hofner and Melchert, 2008. Topic. Classification Hittite is one of the Anatolian languages and is known from cuneiform tablets and inscriptions that were erected by the Hittite kings. The script formerly known as Hieroglyphic Hittite is now termed Hieroglyphic Luyan. 
The Anatolian branch also includes cuneiform Luwian, hieroglyphic Luwian, Palaic, Lycian, Milian, Lydian, Carian, Pisidian, and Sidetic. Unlike other Indo European languages, Hittite does not distinguish between masculine and feminine grammatical gender, and it lacks subjunctive and optative moods as well as aspect. Various hypotheses have been formulated to explain those differences. Some linguists, most notably Edgar H. Sturtevant and Warren Cowgill, have argued that it should be classified as a sister language to Proto Indo European, rather than a daughter language. Their Indo Hittite hypothesis is that the parent language Indo -Hittite lacked the features that are absent in Hittite as well, and Proto Indo European later innovated them. Other linguists, however, prefer the Schwunt. Loss. Hypothesis in which Hittite or Anatolian came from a Proto-Indo-European with the full range of features, but the features became simplified in Hittite. A third hypothesis, supported by Calvert Watkins and others, views the major families as all coming from Proto-Indo-European directly and as being all sister languages or language groups, differences might be explained as dialectical. According to Craig Melchert, the current tendency is to suppose that Proto-Indo-European evolved and that the prehistoric speakers of Anatolian became isolated from the rest of the Pi speech community, so as not to share in some common innovations." Hittite and the other Anatolian languages split off from Proto-Indo-European at an early stage. Hittite thus preserved archaisms that would be lost in the other Indo-European languages. Hittite has many loanwords, particularly religious vocabulary from the non-Indo-European Hurrian and Hattic languages. The latter was the language of the Hattians, the local inhabitants of the land of Hatti before they were absorbed or displaced by the Hittites. Sacred and magical texts from Hattusa were often written in Hattic, Hurrian and Luwian even after Hittite had become the norm for other writings. The Hittite language has traditionally been stratified into Old Hittite o, Middle Hittite MH, and New or Neo-Hittite not to be confused with the Neo-Hittite period, which is actually post-Hittite, corresponding to the Old, Middle and New Kingdoms of the Hittite Empire ca. 1750–1500 BC, 1500–1430 BC and 1430–1180 BC, respectively. The stages are differentiated on both linguistic and paleographic grounds. Topic. Script Hittite was written in an adapted form of peripheral Akkadian cuneiform orthography from northern Syria. The predominantly syllabic nature of the script makes it difficult to ascertain the precise phonetic qualities of some of the Hittite sound inventory. The syllabary distinguishes the following consonants notably, the Akkadian S series is dropped. B, D, G, H, K, L, M, N, P, R, S, T, Z, combined with the vowels A, E, I, U. Additional ya equals i, a, wa equals pi, and y equals y5 equals justin. Signs are introduced. The Akkadian unvoiced, voiced series k per gram, p, b, t, d do not express the voiced, unvoiced contrast in writing, but double spellings in intervocalic positions represent voiceless consonants in Indo European. Sturtevant's law. Topic. Phonology The limitations of the syllabic script have been more or less overcome by means of comparative etymology and an examination of Hittite spelling conventions. Accordingly, scholars have surmised that Hittite possessed the following phonemes. Topic. Vowels Long vowels appear as alternates to their corresponding short vowels when they are so conditioned by the accent. Phonemically distinct long vowels occur infrequently. Topic. Consonants Hittite had two series of consonants, one which was written always geminate in the original script, often called the Fortis series, and another that was always simple, also known as Linus. In cuneiform, all consonant sounds except for glides could be geminate. In plosives, the geminate series is the one descending from Proto-Indo-European voiceless stops, while the simple plosives come form both voiced and voiced aspirate stops. Because of this reason, some have regarded their distinction from the Linus as one of voice. However, the majority view is that they were either differenced by length or tenseness. 
This is supported by the fact that Akkadian, the language from which the Hittites borrowed the cuneiform script, had voicing. Nevertheless, Hittite scribes used voiced and voiceless signs interchangeably. Cloakhorst has also argued that the absence of assimilatory voicing is also evidence for a length distinction. He points out that the word e -ktu does not show any voice assimilation. However, if the distinction was one of voice, agreement between the stops should be expected since the velar and the alveolar plosives are known to be adjacent, given that the u in this word does not stand for a vowel, but represents labialization instead. Topic. Laryngeals Hittite preserves some very archaic features lost in other Indo-European languages. For example, Hittite has retained two of the three laryngeals asterisk H and asterisk H word initially. Those sounds, whose existence had been hypothesized in 1879 by Ferdinand de Saussure, on the basis of vowel quality in other Indo-European languages, were not preserved as separate sounds in any attested Indo-European language until the discovery of Hittite. In Hittite, the phoneme is written as H. In that respect, Hittite is unlike any other attested Indo-European language and so the discovery of laryngeals in Hittite was a remarkable confirmation of Saussure's hypothesis. Both the preservation of the laryngeals and the lack of evidence that Hittite shared certain grammatical features in the other early Indo-European languages have led some philologists to believe that the Anatolian languages split from the rest of Proto-Indo-European much earlier than the other divisions of the Proto-language. See hashtag classification above for more details. Topic. Morphology The oldest attested Indo-European language, Hittite lacks several grammatical features that are exhibited by other early attested Indo-European languages such as Sanskrit, Latin, Ancient Greek, Old Persian and Avestan. Notably, Hittite does not have a masculine-feminine gender system. Instead, it has a rudimentary noun class system that is based on an older animate-inanimate opposition. Topic. Nouns. Hittite inflects for nine cases, nominative, ergative, accusative, dative locative, genitive, allative, ablative, instrumental and vocative, two numbers, singular, and plural, and two animacy classes, animate common, and inanimate neuter. Adjectives and pronouns agree with nouns for animacy, number, and case. The distinction in animacy is rudimentary and generally occurs in the nominative case, and the same noun is sometimes attested in both animacy classes. There is a trend towards distinguishing fewer cases in the plural than in the singular. The ergative case is used when an inanimate noun is the subject of a transitive verb. Early Hittite texts have a vocative case for a few nouns with u, but it ceased to be productive by the time of the earliest discovered sources and was subsumed by the nominative in most documents. The allative was subsumed in the later stages of the language by the date of locative. An archaic genitive plural and is found irregularly in earlier texts, as is an instrumental plural in it. A few nouns also form a distinct locative, which had no case ending at all. The examples of pisna man, for animate and peta place, for inanimate are used here to show the Hittite noun declension's most basic form. Topic. Verbs The verbal morphology is less complicated than for other early attested Indo-European languages like Ancient Greek and Sanskrit. Hittite verbs inflect according to two general conjugations me conjugation and high conjugation, two voices active and medio -passive, two moods indicative mood and imperative and two tenses present, and preterite. Verbs have two infinitive forms, a verbal noun, a supine, and a participle. Rose 2006 lists 132 high verbs and interprets the high per mile oppositions as vestiges of a system of grammatical voice, centripetal voice, versus centrifugal voice. Topic: <laughs> Me conjugation. The me conjugation is similar to the general verbal conjugation paradigm in Sanskrit and can also be compared to the class of me verbs in ancient Greek. The following example uses the verb s, as, to be. Topic. Active voice. Topic. Syntax. 
Hittite has subject-object verb word order a split ergative alignment, and it is synthetic language. Adpositions follow their complement, adjectives and genitives precede the nouns that they modify, adverbs precede verbs, and subordinate clauses precede main clauses. Hittite syntax shows one noteworthy feature that is typical of Anatolian languages. Commonly, the beginning of a sentence or clause is composed of either a sentence connecting particle or otherwise a fronted or topicalized form, and a chain of fixed order clitics is then appended. Corpus Topic. See also Hittite grammar Hittite phonology Hittite cuneiform Hittitology Anatolian languages Bedrick Rosny Harry Hofner Craig Melchert Alwyn Cloakhorst Johannes Friedrich Albrecht Goetz Edgar H. Sturtevant Henri Whitman Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Introductions and overviews Bryce, Trevor The Kingdom of the Hittites. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-924010-8. Bryce, Trevor Life and Society in the Hittite World. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-924170-8. Fortson, Benjamin W. Indo-European Language and Culture, An Introduction. Malden, Blackwell. ISBN 1-4051-0316-7. Melchert, H. Craig The Position of Anatolian. PDF. Dictionaries Goetz, Albrecht Review of, Johannes Friedrich, Hethitisches Wörterbuch, Heidelberg, Winter, Language 30, pp. 401-5. Cloakhorst, Alwyn. Etymological Dictionary of the Hittite Inherited Lexicon. Leiden Boston, Brill, 2008. Puvel, Jan. 1984. Hittite Etymological Dictionary. 10 vols. Berlin, Mouton de Gruder. Sturtevant, Edgar H. 1931. Hittite Glossary, Words of Known or Conjectured Meaning, with Sumerian Ideograms and Akkadian Words Common in Hittite Texts, Language 7, No. 2, pp. 3-82, Language Monograph No. 9. The Chicago Hittite Dictionary Topic. Grammar Hoffner, Harry A., Melchert, H. Craig A Grammar of the Hittite Language. Winona, Eisenbrowns. ISBN 1-57506-119-8. Hout, Theo van den The Elements of Hittite. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0521115647. Rosny, Bedrick Die Sprache der Hethiter, IHR Bau und IHRE Zuhorigkeit zum Indogermanischen Sprachstamm. Leipzig, Hinrichs. Jasinoff, J. H. 2003. Hittite and the Indo-European Verb. Oxford, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-924905-9. Luragi, Sylvia Hittite. Munich, Lincoln Europa. ISBN 3-89586-076-X. Melchert, H. Craig Anatolian Historical Phonology. Amsterdam, Rodopi. ISBN 90-5183-697-X. Patry, Sylvain Lillingemann syntaxique dans les langues indo-europens d'Anatoly. Wiesbaden, Harrisovitz. ISBN 978-3-447-05612-0. Rose, S. R. The Hittite High, Me Conjugations. Innsbruck, Institut für Sprechen und Literaturen der Universität Innsbruck. ISBN 3-85124-704-3.
Sturtevant, Edgar H. A. 1933, 1951. Comparative Grammar of the Hittite Language. Rev. ed. New Haven, Yale University Press, 1951. First edition, 1933. Sturtevant, Edgar H. A. 1940. The Indo-Hittite Laryngeals. Baltimore, Linguistic Society of America. Watkins, Calvert, 2004. Hittite. The Cambridge Encyclopedia of the World's Ancient Languages, 551-575. ISBN 0-521-56256-2. Yakubovich, Ilya Sociolinguistics of the Luwian Language. Leiden, Brill. ISBN 9789004177962. Hitchcock, Edward 1938. The Hittite Ritual of Tunawi. New Haven, American Oriental Society. Sturtevant, Edgar H. A., and George Bechtel A Hittite Christomathy. Baltimore, Linguistic Society of America. Knutson, J. A. 1902. Die Zwei Arzawa Brief, Die Altesten Erkunden in Indogermanischer Sprache. Leipzig, Hinrichs. Topic journal articles Rosny, Bedrick 1915. Die Losung des Hethitischen Problems. Mitteilungen der Deutschen Orient Gesellschaft. 56-17-50. Sturtevant, Edgar H. 1932. The Development of the Stops in Hittite. Journal of the American Oriental Society. American Oriental Society. 52 1, 1 to 12. doi 10.2307, 593573. JSTOR 593573. Sturtevant, Edgar H. 1940. Evidence for Voicing in Hittite G. Language. Linguistic Society of America. 16 2, 81 to 87. Doi 10.2307 408942 JSTOR 408942 Whitman, Henri 1969 A Note on the Linguistic Form of Hittite Sheep Review Hittite et Asianic 22 to 117-118 Whitman, Henri 1973 1964 Some Hittite Etymologies Die Sprache, 10, 19 144 148, 39 43. Whitman, Henri. 1969. The Development of K in Hittite. Glossa, 322 26. Whitman, Henri. 1969. The Indo European Drift and the Position of Hittite. International Journal of American Linguistics. 35, 3, 266 268. Doi 10.1086 465065. Topic external links. Layman, Winfred P. Slocum, Jonathan. 2011. Hittite Online. Linguistics Research Center, University of Texas. Laufenberger, Olivier. 2006. The Hittite Grammar Homepage. Hethitology Portal Mainz in German. The electronic edition of the Chicago Hittite Dictionary, the University of Chicago. ABZU, a guide to information related to the study of the ancient Near East on the web Hittite Dictionary Hittite Basic Lexicon at the Global Lexicostatistical Database Hittite in the Wiki Glossing Ancient Languages Recommendations for the Interlinear Morphemic Glossing of Hittite Texts